Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Nate Moore. Today we're going to talk about some financial functions that are in the formulas tab and in this financial section. I'm not going to go through every single one of these different functions here. What I'm going to do is give you a basic overview of a concept called present value. And we'll start this whole discussion of present value by saying don't use this video to go loan your brother-in-law money or don't use this video to figure out whether or not your bank's giving you a good deal. What I'm going to do is show you how to use the financial calculations in Excel for loans or leases. I'm not going to go through and tell you exactly what uh, the present value calculation does or give you, you know, finance 101 on some of these calculations. I want to show you how to use them and how to use these functions in Excel. To, to calculate a loan or a lease, and again, the distinction here is loan, typically payments are made at the end of the month or the year or whatever the period is that you're borrowing the money. On a lease, typically the payments come at the first of the month or the year or when, whatever period it is that you're borrowing money. So if you want to use some Excel functions to calculate loan or lease terms, the one we're going to talk about today is a, let's click there so you can see it. It's called present value, PV. And this PV function has three arguments that are required, those are in bold, and two more that are optional. And what I want to do is just walk you through the basics of how to use present value. And then we'll do a couple of more videos um, there are other um, Excel functions to calculate future value, to calculate the payment, to calculate the rate, some of those kind of things. Essentially what present value is, is here's the definition. The total amount that a series of future payments is worth now. Or in other words, if I'm going to make 120 payments, so um, and you'll see my, my formula here is 10 years times 12 months, 120 payments, um, and then my interest rate is at 8% divided by the 12 months that I'm paying. The, one of the keys to making this whole thing work is rate and periods have to be on the same time frame. This I multiplied by 12 because I've got 120 payments. This is a monthly rate. This needs to be a monthly rate. Here I need to divide by 12 to make the math work. Let's go back and, and uh, run this now. So I'm going to click this function thing. The rate is that number there, which is 8% uh, divided by 12 months because we're doing monthly payments. N is the number of periods. And let me just click on one. It will tell you as you click through this function arguments window exactly what you need to know. The total number of payment periods in an investment. The payment is the amount that's going out. And you'll notice the, the, the signs are always different. If the payment is a positive number here, Excel is going to calculate the value of 655, 120 payments of $655 going out the door. And then it's going to change the sign to make this negative for the money that's coming in the door. The value of that is if, if the bank were to loan you the money at 8% 10 years is $53,986. So Excel will show that as a negative number. And I'll, I'll play with that in just a second. The future value is, is there any value left at the end of the loan? Do you have the option to buy the equipment for a you know, dollar or for $10,000 or whatever? That's what the future value is. And then the type is, I, and I've got this maybe a little bit easier to see over here. If the type is 1, the payment's at the beginning of the period, like a lease. If the type 0, the payment's at the end of the period, like a loan. And then what you can do is once you've got present value set up here, and I've got the different pieces of the formula all set up below. So there's the rate, the periods, the payment. It's all set up below. Now, what happens if my interest rate goes to 9%? Um, now the bank will only loan me $51,000. And if it bothers you that this is negative, and occasionally people get worked up about, hey, why is that a negative number? It's very easy to do that. And just put a negative sign in front of it, so you're not so worried about whether the cash is going in or out. You just want to show your doctors, hey, this is how much they'll loan us money. I, um, I wanted to show you this as kind of a basic introduction to present value. Present value is a complicated... I mean, that, that, this is a, a, a college-level finance class to understand present value and the different terms. I wanted to show you just the basics of how Excel uses the present value function to make all this work. We're going to come back in the next video and play with another example. Excel, you don't, you don't have to know rate, periods, payment, and future value to make this work. You can know present value, rate, and periods, and it will tell you what the payment needs to be. Maybe we'll do that next. We'll start with another example then. Stay tuned.